TV KPM Hello assalamualaikum I'm sure you're all excited and going to be ready to be immersed in the world of knowledge Are you excited are, are you enthusiastic to learn the tips and tricks on answering SPM questions Do I hear yes that's the spirit and you are on the right track because you are now watching Success SPM 2021 Percutan on Didik TV KPM and my name is Hanim Sean and you might be wondering what subject are we going to talk about today? It's definitely Kesusastraan Inggris or English Literature and you're going to be curious as well which teacher will be teaching us these tips and tricks to answer questions for English Literature? Let's take a look at her profile. Yes, you have seen it. Her name is Puan Asima from SMK Asunta. Hi, Madam Asima. How are Hi. you today? I'm all right. Really good today. You're really good and excited. And I've been informed that you have this nice brand name and I should call you Puan A. Puan A. Oh, that is fantastic. Right. And Puan A, I'm sure you have a lot to share with our pupils at home. Shall we start our lesson? All right. Shall we? Let's go. Okay. Um, everyone who's here with uh, Hanif and I today, welcome to what we are going to consider or call a review lesson on Kesusastraan Inggris, otherwise known as the KI-2206 paper. Mm, sort of like battle preparations because literature, as you know, Sean, uses a lot of figurative language, right? That is so right. So if we were soldiers going into war, what would be the weapons we are going to take with us? So today's review lesson is in preparation for D-Day. And D-Day is on the 22nd of March from 8 to 10.30 a.m. All of you out there, you've got your countdown before D-Day comes. It's going to be a two-hour, 30-minute paper Let's go, right? This is nothing new. Of course, new to Hanif. Perhaps first time he's looking at it. Let's see if at the end of today, I can convince him to register for the paper. Oh, All right. I'm so getting nervous myself. The KI-2206 paper obviously is made up of three sections, A, B, and C. So candidates out there, you would already know where to place yourself. The exam paper begins with section a. Pros. Candidates would have chosen and prepared with their teacher whether they want to do six short stories or instead study a novel. Okay, what do you think? Would you do short stories or novel? Wow, I might consider the one novel though, one A. Okay, then after that in section B, you've got one drama to answer and then in poetry, as you can see, these are the ten titles. All right. So that's a quick overview of what candidates will be preparing for their battle on 22nd of March. Whether to do the six short stories, whether to do The Lost King or The Clay Marble, whether to do Flowers for Algernon, Merchant of Venice or Pope Spring. All right? I'm sure candidates are going to smile when they see because these are all the titles that they have prepared for. Okay? Now, we're going to look at the next slide here, and this is perhaps my first takeaway for today's lesson. By all means, please remember time management. The candidates only have from 8 to 10.30, and that means you pretty much have less than 2 hours and 30 minutes. How much time shall we spend on each of these questions? All right. So, section A and section B, prose and drama, what is similar between the two is the fact that they are both made up of two questions, 15 and 20. 
So we would like to suggest candidates out there, please ensure you take about 50 to 55 minutes each as you go through prose and as you go through drama. And then when you get to section C, as you can see here, it's 20 minutes each perhaps because both questions, the question A and B, is valued at 15 marks each. Now, I know I've mentioned the syllabus. I know I've mentioned time management. Perhaps candidates out there are thinking, that's all I have to do. Just know my text and how much time I have. But perhaps the biggest reminder for today is to tell candidates out there, please do not forget your assessment objectives. All right? In the responses that you are going to write, all six that you are going to write in the two hours and 30 minutes, Please remember that each of your six responses should incorporate these assessment objectives. All right? So, Hanif, first time listening. If yeah. you hear me say A01, 2, 3, and 4, I'm referring to these. Yeah? Right, take note. These are assessment objectives that candidates should know and incorporate into their responses. Do you know your text well? Can you support? with textual evidence, all right? And then AO2, can you show that you have been able to infer and discern underlying meaning? So this is where we want our smart kids to be able, be able to say, I have put the pieces of the puzzle together, all right? If candidates can give us one and two, half the battle is already won, all right? And then, Moving on, AO3 is assessment objective three. Can you, the candidate, show that you are able to discuss effective use of language in the text? Choice of words, choice of poetic devices, how, where, how does it make the text more important, emotionally appealing? All those go under AO3. All right, and the last AO, is perhaps my personal favorite, all right? Because AO4 is where you must prove that you have been able to not just read through the text, know the text well, support by providing evidence, all right? But also able to tell very clearly in your responses, I have got a personal response. You can't read through a text and be unmoved by it. You can't read through a text and say, okay, done. I've read it, the story's over. I've answered the question, and that's it from me. All right? If any response is to be considered comprehensive and complete, it is one that actually also has a O for. All right, candidates are expected to be able to show mature and critical response to text. Now, how about that? Oh, that's exciting, point A. And I'm curious as well, when you, do, when you mention mature and critical response to text, mm. that would mean the candidate would need to share his or her point of view on what is needed from the question? Correct. So, when we have a text, that we've read through with the candidates and we have discussed, we not only discuss what's been happening within the plot. What did A do to B? How does B feel about A? We actually must eventually come to the point where we ask ourselves, how did I feel upon reading this text? Am I unmoved? Am I pleased? Am I disgusted by his behavior? All that goes into AO4. Thank you for that right. question. I think that is fantastic. And I'm sure all of us as well, when we read books, when we read novels, we do have a certain emotion being evoked when you read about a certain character. And this is what Puan A is sharing with us today. And she's going to share even more after this because we're just going to take a very short break. And I'm sure you are still excited to know more. So make sure you stay tuned with us on in Success SPM 2021 Pecutan TV KPM.
and you are back with us and I'm sure you're feeling fantastic from our first session. Why? Because we have just received an overview of what we are learning today on Success SPM 2021 Pecutan on Didik TV KPM. And definitely the subject that we are covering is Kesusastraan Inggris or English Literature. With me, we have Puan Asima or we are able to call her Puan A. So, I believe in this section, we're going to be talking about prose. Am I right, Puan A? Right. Okay. If you're ready. I'm excited about okay. this. Okay. Um, if you can take a quick look, you will probably see what's on the left is something that we already took a look earlier. All right. Showing deep knowledge of the text, able to discern underlying meaning from the text, discussing language use and providing personal response is what we hope all candidates can integrate and put together with the knowledge of these texts, right? As we mentioned earlier, candidates would have already decided and selected whether to work on six short stories or one of these two novel options. So, let's just say this is 22nd of March and you're sitting for the paper. I am. Okay. The first thing you see when you open up the question paper will be section A, prose. So let's imagine this is an overview of the questions you can see. All right? What you can quickly realize is the fact that, as I mentioned earlier, the A questions are extract-based, and these extract-based questions are all 15 marks each, right? Whether you're doing short stories, whether you're doing one of the novels, okay. What makes it a little bit more challenging would be on the morning of the exam, the candidates will not know beforehand which four short stories are coming out. So what I have here are merely examples or sample questions of what could possibly appear. Four out of the six could appear, and they could be turning 30, sambal without anchovies, thieving daughter, and birds of paradise. So if you're looking at the likelihood, four out of six actually means you must know your text very well. All six short stories, right? So Candidates would have decided whether to do the six short stories or one of the two novels. And what I have here is an A question and a B question based on Min Fong Ho's The Clay Marble. Okay, take a look at the questions. Based on turning 30, 1A. What are your thoughts and feelings about Beverly at this moment in the story? Analyze the relationship between Aisha and her mother in this scene. That's the question based on thieving daughter. And then, if you look at novel 3A, you look at the question, it goes, in this incident, each character has a different opinion on how Dara was able to find her family. What do you think of their opinions? You will realize and remember what your teachers have told you. These A questions are restricted clearly restricted to the extracts that they have given you, all right? Whether it is turning 30, whether it is a different short story, whether it is the clay marble, an extract-based question means you do not have um, the liberty to lavishly and generously tell your examiner, oh, I know everything about this text. That's not going to get you anywhere. So your analysis and your response is entirely based on the given extract, okay? So that's the first thing I'd like for everybody to remember. An A question based on the extract valued at 15 marks must show, convincingly show, that you know your text and your analysis of the given extract. Whether they word it as this moment in the story, whether they word it as in this scene, whether they word it as in this incident, you realize you have not been asked to mention anything beyond, anything before, anything after. So don't go there. All right? Don't go there. 
moving on, if you're looking at the B questions, you will realize they also have something in common. They are 20 mark questions, and they all are questions that are based on the main ideas, the main messages, and the themes found in the text. So for example, if you're looking at Sambal Without Anchovies by Chua Kot Yi, you've got there the dynamics of Hanif, if I'm not mistaken. That's the protagonist in this short story. Oh, that's interesting. Right. And Hanif is a young businessman who goes and butts heads with his father because he and his father have different ideas about what to do with the nasi lemak stall. So you've got their family relationships, you've got their love and support, you've got their communication. Those are all themes that teachers would have covered with their pupils. So look at the question. Explore the ways in which Chua Ko Yi makes the stall significant in the story Sambal Without Anchovies. For 20 marks, you not only need to know the text, you must also have a clear understanding of underlying meaning. You also must be able to show language in use. And then, what's your response? A mature and critical response, yeah? Not a response that says, because he's also Anif. I'm also a Hanif. I'm very upset with the father. <laughs> Nothing like that, please. All right, I just made a bad joke. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the birds of paradise, okay? And then let's take a look at clay marble. Again, the questions are based on the themes found in the text. So now we know the difference, yeah? When you're looking at prose, A is extract based, and B is obviously themes and main ideas. Now, take a quick look at this extract that comes from our short story, Thieving Doctor. Right? Imagine that this is the extract that comes from the story, the short story, and the question that follows is, analyze the relationship between Aisha and her mother. All right? I've made it a little bit bigger so that you can see reading through. The first thing you do is put it into perspective. Where in this short story did it happen? This is at the beginning where the mother's hoping for meaningful morning conversation at the breakfast table. But obviously she's disappointed because you see there she says in her mind, are you my daughter or simply a munching machine? Aisha doesn't seem very aware of what her mother feels. So if you were to get a question like this, I would be hoping candidates out there would remember the AOs. Yeah, remember the AOs, yeah? Yep, the is. AOs and the question, how do we analyze the relationship between Aisha and her mother? So you would have to put there your textual evidence. You would have to put there the underlying meaning. It is not what it seems. It's not just breakfast one morning. All right, what she was expecting, they did not materialize. Alright, Aisha did not fulfill those thoughts that she had. And when she says, my daughter is a thief, first she steals my beauty. Now she robs me of my appetite. That's your AO3. Why did the author use these words, a thief who steals and robs? No mother would describe her own child like that, isn't it? Now, as Hanif asked earlier, how do we express yeah, our personal responses? I would tell candidates, put yourself in their shoes and then ask, do you feel pity? Do you feel anger? Do you feel, as I put here on this slide, the turmoil is relatable. As a teenager myself, you don't feel your mother understands you. Been there, done that, okay? now. We have looked at an extract-based question. Now let's take a look at a B question, okay? Um, if I can tell Hanif a little bit about the clay marble. Right. It is one that centers on war, and there are these young children who are caught in the middle of all the conflict and chaos. That right? sounds quite daunting. It is traumatizing to imagine that the main characters in this novel are pretty much 
um, 12 to about 17 youngsters okay if the question was analyze Jantu's ideas about war in the novel what I would expect candidates out there to quickly do the moment they see that question is to quickly remember all these main ideas what did she go through what did she feel how was she influenced by everything that happened and once you've done all that you will be able to move on to this all right and i'm hoping candidates will always be able to get to this template for 20 marks all right analyze jantu's ideas about war what is the a01 that's relevant to this question all right what is the a02 the underlying meaning when she says there those that are fighting in the war only care about themselves the children who are caught in the war they are defenseless and they are suffering with no protection what about a03 i love this example uh, personally speaking because jantu tells dara they don't use soccer balls they use us so jantu is telling dara these politicians they don't care about our welfare but their own personal benefits and gain that's what you need to put in because that's what the question wants and finally what would you say about war? I think it could have a lot of negative repercussions. Right. So we would expect candidates to be able to delve into their emotions. Imagine what Jantu and Dara have gone through and be able to say at least, I am sad to note, sad to read, that Jantu's dreams have now been destroyed. And spoiler alert, honey, mm -hmm. Jantu doesn't make it. Oh no. Right. In this tragedy ah. of a novel, Jantu doesn't survive the war. Oh wow, okay. That is a sad that that is sad news to me, but perhaps on a happy note, I will try and check out my character in Nasi Samba without Samba. anchovies. I'm sorry, Samba without anchovies. I think that's very exciting. While I'm gonna talk to point A about that character, let's have a short break and let's make sure you stay with us on success SPM 2021 TV. KPM and welcome back to Success SPM 2021 Pecutan on Didik TV KPM. And I've just read a bit about Samba with anchovies and there's a character in there named Hanif which is, I feel, has a bit of same characteristics as I am though I'm quite assertive and I noticed that he might be a bit assertive as well. And definitely today we're learning about Kesusastra and Ingris which is English literature and with me we have Madam Asima or we can address her as Puan A. And point A, I think in this section, where section B, we're going to talk about drama. All right. Okay. Oh. Ready? Yes, I'm, I'm ready okay. to be dramatic. So we're leaving behind the short stories where Hanif and his father argue about the Nasi Lemak stall. <laughs> and we're moving on to drama or play. And those of you who've already decided, you know and recognise very well these tags. A lot of you probably have fallen in love with Flowers for Algernon. It is a radio drama which features a slow male adult learner and his mouse. Then you have Merchant of Venice, of course, an iconic masterpiece from William Shakespeare. And the third option for drama, Hope Springs. Again, I ask that all candidates out there, please remember whatever questions come your way remember your responses need to incorporate the assessment objectives all right knowing your time frame and knowing your texts well is not going to be enough all right so the first 35 marks have gone now we're going into section b drama and let's imagine these are the six questions all right candidates would have to choose which drama they wish to answer, okay? Whether Flowers, Hope, or Merchant of Venice. Sometimes I call it MOV, right? Again, pretty much like what you saw earlier for prose, which is in section A, the 15 mark questions are all based on an extract. Again, that reminder stands tall. 
please do not overly lavishly fill your answers or responses with points that are not from the extract okay i'm gonna show you a bit later but before that let's take a look at the b questions all right the b questions for the dramas that we have here today take a look reality often far from expectations analyze the role of a character the ringleader in hope springs and the importance of loyalty as portrayed by shakespeare in mov clearly you can see when you are looking at these 20 mark questions the b questions you need to have a deep understanding of the themes love friendship challenges in life, resilience, perseverance. Those are all the ideas you bring in with you into the exam hall. Okay, now let's take a look at Merchant of Venice, A question. How do you feel about Portia at this moment in the drama? Obviously, we know who Portia is. And in this extract, all right, it starts off with Portia saying to Shylock, a pound of that same merchant's flesh is thine. The court awards it and the law does give it. Shylock is obviously delighted and pleased because he feels Portia, who's actually in disguise. This is a clever young woman, okay? She's in disguise as a lawyer. And she has said in front of everyone in the court, Shylock has a valid case a legal point against Antonio but then you go on to read and then she says right uh, at the end here prepare thee to cut off the flesh right prepare thee to take off that pound of flesh as in the contract between Shylock and Antonio but shed thou no blood nor cut thou less, no more, but just a pound of flesh. And that's the loophole that Shylock did not expect. And this exciting moment in MOV comes from Act 4, Scene 1. So the moment candidates see this, they should know where in the drama did this take place. How do they feel about Portia? Would you imagine her to be the villain, the heroine? Did she do something right? Did she do something not right? Okay, that's all part of the AO4. So, let's take a look at some of these points that are here. In this courtroom scene, it was satisfying. That's what I've put there. It was satisfying to see Portia cleverly tricking the vengeful Shylock. Who's saying that? I'm saying that. And when I say that in my essay, that's clearly a O four, right? When I continue by explaining more about the extract, and I'm putting in my textual evidence, as you can see, these are all colored in blue. I've already covered my a O one and two, when I am able to use all these textual evidence and elaborate. Okay? One, covered. Two, covered. Four, covered. What's left? Only three. Only Definitely. three. So where is our AO3? How did Shakespeare use language effectively here? So I've got there these words and expressions in orange. So, I would like candidates to realise that length is not our priority. We're not looking at long answers where you throw in everything. The common expression in joking manner, of course, is throw everything in but the kitchen sink. No. Here, you're going to talk about Act 4, Scene 1. And specifically, you're going to react to Portia. What do you think about her? What did the others think about her? Right? So you've got your A01, A02, A03, A04, and it is only then your response or your essay is considered complete and comprehensive. I'm sure many will be able to relate the background of the play. Um, 
that Antonio was there meeting Shylock only to assist his beloved friend Bassanio. But all that background information, is it relevant? Perhaps not. Right. It's not relevant to this 20 mark question. What you are going to... Uh, 15 mark question, sorry. What you are going to focus on is the extract. So you're not going to mention the other characters. Who are you going to focus on? Portia. Portia in disguise. Portia pushing Shylock into a corner, telling him that because he pushed for this in a court of law, it is considered an attempt of murder. Do you know Merchant of Venice, Hanif? Well, I think I will start reading it after our show. <laughs> <laughs> but it does sound very exciting. Right. So, as I mentioned earlier, when you say satisfying to see Portia tricking the vengeful Shylock, when you say uh, Shylock falling for her trick and Portia playing with his emotion, that's your reaction. You are reacting to Portia in the extract. That means, ladies and gentlemen, you are doing a good job. You are on the right track. Okay? When you put there, I realised only later, the expression something else was a foreshadowing. That's a device. Because a foreshadowing tells us something that might have happened, uh, going to happen in the future, right? So there you have it, the Merchant of Venice. And I think that's exciting for Merchant of Venice, which I'm going to start reading after this show. And we have a bit more after this, where I think we'll be talking about poetry. Is that right, Fuan A? Correct. Right, so if you want to know about poetry, make sure you stay tuned with us on Success SPM. TV, KPM. Welcome back on Success SPM 2021 Pechota on Didek TV KPM. And right now, we have Madam Asima who I address as Puan A and she's going to be teaching us Kesusastraan Inggris or English Literature. And I believe in this segment, we're in Section C where we're going to learn about poetry. All it's right. definitely one of my favourite things to learn. Okay, ready? I'm excited still. So we've covered Section A, Prose, and we've covered Section B, Drama and Play. So that means we've come to the last section of the exam paper. And this section, poetry, is made up of questions that come from 10 poems. These 10 poems, I'm uh, guessing all these students out there are now really studying. And I think one of the biggest advantages that candidates out there have is the fact that with this new format, they do not have to memorize every single bit. Unlike the previous format, candidates will have all the poems provided. All oh, right. Ah, so as long as you have done your work studying and revising, the poems are going to be there, appearing in your question paper, guiding you. And that's such a load off, isn't it? There's so much less stress. So these are the 10 poems that all of you would have already thoroughly studied. I'm going to show you four example questions. All right. Let's just say Hanif is sitting for the paper and this is 22nd of March. All right. 8 to 10.30. Hanif has finished with section A. Hanif has finished with section B. He's gotten now to section C. All candidates need to select whether they want to answer question 8A and B or 9A and B. I do not know which four are coming out. So, I always tell my pupils, be ready with all 10. There's just no escaping knowing all the 10 texts there. Okay? But what I have for everyone to see today is a collection of four poems. So let's just imagine, Hanif, mm -hmm. that you've got 8A, Daffodils, by William Wordsworth. 8B, The Tiger, by William Blake. It's a William-William combo. You can see that. And then 9A, you've got Two Autumn, by John Keats. And then 9B, If, by Rudyard Kipling. 
the first thing you need to do when you open up to section C of the question paper is to decide. Do I want to do daffodils and tiger or do I want to answer autumn and if? Candidates cannot say I would like to choose and mix because the pairings would have already been set. So that's why we always tell our candidates be sure to know all 10 poems. All right, let's take another look at all four. Unlike section A, unlike section B, where you saw A questions based on extracts valued at 15 and theme questions valued at 20, what you see here with the four poems is the fact that each of these four are valued at 15. 15, 15, 15, 15. So perhaps candidates are going to be asking, are they all exactly the same? Generally, what we expect to see in the question paper on the 22nd of March would be A questions, if you're looking at examples there, pretty much sound more like technical questions. Do you know your use of language? Do you know how devices have been used? Take a look at the A questions there. Based on daffodils, how does Wordsworth use language to convey nature's ability to offer us comfort? Use of language. And then to autumn. How does John Keats use language to show the abundance of the autumn season? So it's very clear. Right? It's very clear that the requirement of the task cannot run away from candidates discussing use of language. So you're going to look at the poem given, you're going to throw in everything that you feel is appropriate for discussion. Okay, And we're going to go there very soon. All right. If you're looking at tiger and if, you're going to ask me, are they the same? Are they also technical in nature where I need to show I understand use of language all right if you compare or contrast Hanif you will see right. the A questions and the B questions they are of a different nature that is true ah. if you're looking at the tiger question it says there the tiger is a creature of admirable beauty do you agree you have to decide, you cannot stand on the fence, you have to agree or disagree. And then, if you're looking at if by Kipling, right? A life of honour is one that contains good values. Candidates would be expected not just to know the poem, discuss the poem, but relate it to the given statement. All right, so if they know the poem well, if they've done their research, this will be a piece of cake. cake. All right, so I mentioned two autumn earlier, and what I have for all of you to see right now is an example A question. All right, an A question there that goes, how does Wordsworth use language? Don't forget, language use, to show the abundance of the autumn season. All right, so when you open up to section C, poetry, first thing you will see would be the poem itself. The poem's provided, no worries there. What's coloured for you today, for you to better understand, that's what's not going to be there. So you really <laughs> need to know your stuff, okay? What I've put here as an example is, let's just imagine Hanif is answering right now, okay? Autumn by Keats, and he gets the question, the abundance of the autumn season. Oh no, what do I do? The abundance that is seen in the autumn season as conveyed, as shown by John Keats, whether literal or figurative, is seen throughout the three stanzas. And what I've done is I've moved those main ideas into this box here. All right, I'm sure, honey, if you can see yes. the abundance of the autumn season, what I translated that into would be an abundance of harvest, an abundance of activity, and then an abundance of beauty. 
That means candidates already know you can't run away from discussing the entire poem. All right. So what I did was, as you can see, I mentioned here, this is like a recap for candidates. I mentioned here, when you're looking at the harvest that takes place during the autumn season, what do you see? A lot of visual imagery. The season is lush, plentiful. There's ripe harvest of grains, of plants, of fruits. Where does it all come from? The conspiracy or the friendship working relationship between the autumn season and the sun. So you're actually discussing Mother Nature at her best. You're discussing how nature has managed to create all these magical treats during autumn. So if you break it into three, abundance of harvest, activity and beauty, you could then already lay out your response, all right? When you lay out your response, you would work out the first stanza and then relate it to the abundance of harvest. Where is that? All right, I'm going to test Hanif now and ask him right. if any words catch his eye where harvest is concerned. I could see it says that and fill all fruit with ripeness to the core. Mm. Would that be an appropriate answer? An appropriate textual evidence. Thank you so much. So when you're looking at abundance of harvest, the fact that during the autumn season, everything is lush and in abundance, you're going to look at obviously these verbs, all right? Your load and bless, your bend, your fill, your swell, your plump, your later flowers, and then your clammy cells. All these already strengthening your idea about the abundance of harvest as seen in the autumn season. Okay, so Hanif is on the right track. He's then going to go on to the second stanza. He's then going to talk about the abundance of the autumn season where activities are concerned. Test you again. <laughs> What I... words do you think are appropriate as textual evidence? Since it's mentioning activity, could mm. it be the last line when it, thou watches the last oozings hours by hours? All right, because great I'm answer hours there. By hours All right. there. Mm -hmm. So when you have an abundance of activity, this is Keats conveying to his readers how autumn is a season that is filled with the hustle and bustle of human activity. All right? So you've got there the gleaners, you've got there the collectors, you've got there all sorts of harvesting going on, on the right track. Now, hey, we two. get to the last <laughs> stanza. And this may be a little tricky. When we say the abundance of the autumn season, and I say, Autumn is filled with beauty. A lot of people out there, perhaps not students of the KI or Kursu Sastra and English subject, they might not see the word beauty as deep as they should and perhaps only look at physical beauty. But when we're looking at abundance of beauty in the autumn season, Keats is actually paying tribute to autumn by saying beauty is ever present in the autumn season. It lies in the richness of life that you can actually only hear and witness when the season comes around. All right? A lot of kids will ask, what do you mean, Cher? What, 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 what do you mean by unique? So I always have to say, autumn has a role to play a special and unique role with the other three seasons, all right? So, when you get to the bleat of the lambs, the singing of the crickets, the whistling of the robins, those are all sounds that you can only hear during... Autumn. All right, Definitely. and that's what makes autumn special. There you have it. We've been able to answer a 15-mark question based on the poem given. How does Wordsworth use language to show 
the abundance of the autumn season. Okay, honey? Yep. I think I could, I guess I could answer it quite well so far. Want to do the paper on the 22nd of March? I could try. Well, I've been really paying attention. <laughs> okay. Let's take another look here. All right. Tiger by William Blake. Before we go off today, do you agree or disagree with the statement given? If you agree, provide your AO1, 2, 3 and 4. If you disagree, you don't think the tiger is a creature of beauty, where do you stand? What are your points of reason? So one might say, the tiger is a beautiful creature. So yes, I stand for agree. All right. Another candidate might say, I disagree because the tiger's features are not pretty, not beautiful, but frightening and scary. So candidates must come to a stand and candidates must justify with an outline of a response. I generally ask my pupils to make sure that their template has paragraphing. Please don't forget paragraphing and put your answers that flow from one idea to the next, from one paragraph to the next. Are we okay? We're doing good. All right. Do you feel like you can answer this question? Well, I'm hoping so. I quite like the fact that I could choose to agree or disagree, but I do feel like I'm on the agreeable side. Though. Okay. I think tigers are beautiful animals. And therefore, you say the tiger is indeed a creature of admirable beauty. All right, that's 15 marks there. Oh, wow, that's amazing. And I think we learned a lot today. Juan A, I really appreciate how you have divided the questions and how you guided us through and made it look very easy, in fact. <laughs> made it look very easy. And for someone who did not, who was not able to learn this, this different poems and drama, I think I've learned quite a lot today and it's very exciting. And with that, definitely, I would like to thank Madam Asima Amaluddin from SNK Asunta Petaling Jaya and Most Puan welcome. A, if I could address you. Uh, it has been an amazing session. Well, I'm sure my pupils, my friends at home, you have learned a lot. I have learned a lot as well today. And just a little bit of a tip for you, especially when we learn literature and all the other subjects. Remember, the quality of our minds depend on the quality of our questions. Always be inquisitive. Thank you so much for your attention today. For success, SPM 2021, Pecutan Didik TV KPM. My name is Hanif Sean. Assalamualaikum and see you again.